So let's let's tell people a little bit about the problem that you work on today. Um, I think everybody knows directionally that obesity is a significant issue, but uh, you can probably quantify this for people a little bit better and help people understand maybe even over a few thousand years how things have changed in terms of the, uh, let, let's just talk about the phenotype. We're going to obviously talk about the environment and the, the triggers, but let's just talk phenotypically. How have we as a species who, you know, we've been around what, maybe 6 million years in our current rendition, but what, what's changed over the last thousands, a uh, thousand years in terms of our phenotype? Yeah. So if we're talking, if we're comparing the, uh, body shape of people in modern affluent societies like the United States to what the typical human would have looked like a thousand years ago, I think it's clear that we're much fatter today on average with a much higher uh, percentage of obesity. And a thousand years ago, there was obesity. I mean, we have evidence even from Egyptian mummies that um, among the wealthy, there was obesity. Not to say that it necessarily was super common, but I don't think it was that uncommon um, among the wealthy, I think probably for similar reasons that we have obesity today. But um, certainly the prevalence was much lower. And when we start to get into the more modern historical period where we start to actually get data on this, the first data that we can find on this in the United States, or at least that I have found that is somewhat informative, are from um, Civil War veterans from 1890 and 1900. They did height and weight measurements on middle-aged Civil War veterans. So these people were, I think, almost exclusively white men. Um, however, if you compare to the same demographic, so middle-aged white men today, you see that there was almost no obesity back then. And today the obesity rate is something like four, probably 45% for that same demographic. And, and just to be clear, we're defining obesity in the most traditional way, which is the use of body mass index. And we're defining it as a BMI of more than 30, correct? Yeah, correct. And so, yeah. So the advantage of BMI is it's really easy to measure and you can calculate it from these really simple measures that go back a long time. Unfortunately, they didn't have DEXA machines yeah, yeah, exactly. in 1890, so, yeah. um, which would have been, of course, a more informative way of looking at it. Um, but yeah, using measures that we can compare over long periods of time, like body mass index, um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was like a few percent. It was like low single digits of people actually classified as BMI over 30 at that time, 120, 130 years ago. And then if we um, look toward more recent data, what we see is that between, so the first, the first really good data we have starts in the 1960s for the United States. That's when the uh, NHES surveys started, which later became NHANES. And in those surveys, what you see is by the time they started measuring it, it had already gone up from that previous time in the in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So you're saying, Stefan, that there really wasn't a lot of longitudinal data from 1900 to 1960 that that kind of can, you know to to check what that trend line was doing. It was sort of this big effort in 1900, and then another big effort didn't take place till about 1960. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that I'd call it a big effort, but the biggest that I'm aware of in the late, in the, the one in the, the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, and then the true, like true representative national sampling started in the 1960s and then got better through the 70s. And, and now we have this, this um, NHANES survey methodology that is the best source of evidence that we have. And so it started, started, getting good in the 60s. And what were those levels there, Stefan, in the 1960s? Yeah, I think the earliest measures we have are like something like, I don't remember the exact figure, but it's like 12% of US adults had obesity at that time, something like that in the earliest measures. And do you have a sense of, because I'm sure this is going to become more relevant today, is looking at 
what, what, what is the term that's used if BMI is over 35? Isn't there a extreme category of obesity? Yeah. Or morbid obesity? Is that defined as 35 Gosh, or 40? Yeah, or I think the, the terminology has changed to, you know, try to avoid stigma. Uh, it has been extreme obesity or morbid obesity. I can't remember what the current um, term is for it, but yeah, there's a category over 35 as well. And, and presumably there's been a change in that as well. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh yeah, yeah. If, Sorry. If, there's yeah. a class system. So class one, class two, class three. So I think that corresponds to 30, 35 and, and 40, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, you were saying? Yeah. So, so, so basically this progression was not just at the kind of median level, because I'm sure the median BMI was also moving. The mean BMI was also moving. The fraction over 30 and presumably the fraction over whatever that highest threshold is, be it 35 or 40. Yes. And actually, the most extreme changes happened in more severe obesity. So you see very, very little, very, very few people had BMIs over 35 in the earliest measures. And then now it's like, it's, it's, something like nine or 10% today. So, um, of, of adults. So there has been, uh, more movement at the extreme end than, than at the mean. Yes. And, um, and that's what happens when a distribution spreads out, which is what happened. If you look at the, the distribution of BMIs, it used to be a lot tighter and it just got less tight. So there are still people who are lean. Um, there are still people in every BMI category, just like there used to be. But since it has spread out, you get a disproportionate increase at extreme values. What about underweight? What was, if you happen to know, what was the fraction of underweight in 1900? If we would define that, say, BMI below, I don't know what underweight is. Is it below 18 or below 20? And then how has that changed over time? Yeah, typically the cutoff is 18.5. And I don't know the answer to your question. I think it was higher than it is today, uh, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs>